This past week in my message, I shared a video that Eric Jacobs made for his family uh, following a dream in, in which he died. I, and I had several people ask, so is there a link to, to this video? So I put that in my email. And by the way, in 2010, USA Today ran a story about Eric and Heather and what happened next. You can access that in my email as well. You know, the encouragement from Paul's life is to finish strong. And we were reminded this past weekend that like Paul, we need to serve God passionately using the gifts and abilities that he's given to you. We need to live our faith. Don't let just be a Sunday thing or a sometimes thing that you do. And we need to point people to Jesus one person at a time. And we do that here through discipleship, which means someone walks your faith journey with you so that you can do the same for someone else. Listen, I have admitted before that there was a time in my life when I merely went to church, but I wasn't really following Jesus. It looked good to others who didn't know me well, but I was lying about who I was to others and honestly to myself. Paul reminds us to live a life worthy of the calling that we have received. So I hope that Paul's and, and Eric's words and examples will encourage you and help you realize that your words and your example will help someone else be a disciple of Jesus too. Last week, I began sharing about Michelle's upcoming sabbatical and what a sabbatical is. And if you missed that, you can go back and catch that. I also mentioned that this is something that she's looked forward to and dreaded at the same time. You know, certainly she has had days off and even vacation time, which have been great opportunities to rest and, and to be with friends and family. But truthfully, MCC is never far from our staff's minds, even on those kinds of days. And to be 100% off the grid from MCC will be challenging, but she understands the benefits enough to work hard to make that a reality. Her sabbatical, I mentioned last week, will start September 3rd. She returns to the office during the week on October 2nd. And in case you were wondering, I have a couple questions to answer for you. How will Michelle's responsibilities be real reallocated? You know, she's worked hard with Rich to be sure that her responsibilities will be covered during her absence. They'll be covered before she leaves and anything that's ongoing will be covered by ministry teams as much as possible with staff stepping in to cover for any issues that might arise. But if you have any questions or concerns, you can email us at office at exploremcc.org. Another question, is there anything that I can do to help? You know, I, I just want to say, by the way, if you've been wondering at, it's one of the reasons MCC is such a special place. Thank you for your heart in this. And here's some ways you can help. Do encourage Michelle as she prepares for her time away and do pray for her every day from September 3rd to October 2nd. Ask God to speak to her and to remind her that she's not what she does. Children's pastor, she's his child. Don't contact her during that time, which sounds odd, but the idea behind a sabbatical is to experience a complete disconnect from pastoral responsibilities. She's carried those every day for almost seven years. Most people have jobs that they can walk away from at the end of the day and really not think about them until they go back to work. That's not true in ministry. Do let us know if you want to be part of our ministry areas. You can contact, again, office at exploremcc.org. Man, what a great surprise if she came back to find new people serving in her ministry. Listen, our foundational belief at MCC is that the church is led by Jesus and the Holy Spirit through people who have been given the necessary gifts for the roles for which they've been selected. I can't tell you how thankful I am for our staff and leaders who allow God to work through them to make MCC a place where people feel safe investigating who Jesus is and who he will be in their lives. And for those of us who follow him to help others become disciples, it will not be surprising to find that in her absence, God has raised up even more people to lead and serve him. Perhaps he's already been prompting you. Hey, this Sunday, we get to start a new series and we're calling it, The More Things Change, The More They Stay The Same. We're gonna walk through 1 Corinthians. A hundred years ago, life was a little different in the US. So if you take a look around your home, back then there would have been no refrigerators, microwaves, hair dryers. Very rarely did someone have a bathroom, let alone two or three in their house. On the other hand, a hundred years ago, the world was just coming out of one of the greatest pandemics it had ever known the H1N1, known as the Spanish flu, it infected about a quarter of the world's population and it's estimated to have killed at least 50 million people. Again, the more things change, the more they stay the same. This week, we're gonna to begin to walk through the letter Paul wrote to the church in the city of Corinth to find out that it's not just true of the United States 100 years ago, but the church 2000 years ago. We're also going to see what we can learn from them about how to respond to people and issues in our culture today. And as with every message, uh, we offer a Bible reading plan that complements and coordinates uh, what we read with what we've talked about on Sunday mornings. Now, 
This is not meant to alter Bible reading plans that you are already participating in. Rather, we offer these for those who are not currently reading the Bible at least four times a week to help you develop this habit that is, by the way, the greatest catalyst for growing your faith. So our Bible reading plan for next week is 1 Corinthians part one. There's a link in my email. This is part one of a five part verse by verse journey through the book of 1 Corinthians. Now we'll dive into chapters one to three as we discover true wisdom. This weekend, man, whether you're online or on campus, I'm looking forward to seeing you.